Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Biology Made Easy. Today I'll be bringing you a very ecstatic topic known as the termination of DNA replication in prokaryotes. In my previous videos, I've already talked in detail about the initiation part and the elongation part of the DNA replication. So today we'll be dealing about the termination part. So first of all, we have to take into account that the structure of the DNA in the prokaryotic system is circular. It's known as covalently closed circular DNA or triple C DNA. Now, the specialized terms are ter sites and ter sequences. Ter stands for termination sequences. Each termination sequences K, I, E, D, A, C, B, F, G, A, G, J comprises of 23 base pairs. An equivalent of these five sequences on each side of the specific location at which the two replication FOX, FOX2 and FOX1 join. They comprise almost 100 kilo, 100 kilo base pairs or 100 KB. Now what happens is these ter sites are you can say orientation dependent they are extremely dependent on, on orientation or you can say they are quite vectorial in nature they become permissible and non permissible dependent on the direction of the replication fork they are encountering so let me get down to business so let's take replication fork 1 so after the replication fork 1 it starts traversing it reaches j g f b and c you can see the direction of the replication fork and the direction of these termination sequences coincide. They are of the same direction. So they are vectorial in nature. They become permissible ends or permissible ter sites specifically for replication fork 1. But when the replication fork 1 reaches A, D, E, I, K, see the direction of these sites and the direction of the replication fork, they are counterwise or the, you can say they are just the opposite in direction they counter each other in direction so these specific these five termination sites they become non permissible for the replication fork one traversal it cannot let it traverse through these it will prohibit it will prevent its movement through these sites thereby preventing or seizing the movement of replication fork one now let's come to replication fork two same way you can see the direction of replication fork 2 coincides with the direction of k i e d and a termination sites so these sites become permissible sites for replication fork 2 whereas these sites were non permissible sites for replication fork 1 and when replication fork 2 eventually reaches c b f g j the direction of these termination sites is opposite it counters the direction of replication fork 2 Thereby, these sites become non-permissible for replication fork 2, whereas they were permissible for replication fork 1. And thereby, these sites would prevent the traversal or travel of the replication fork 2. It would seize its movement. It would, it would prevent its movement and thereby cause the complete termination of the DNA replication. And now, how does the termination really take place via molecular mechanism? Something known as TUS protein, known as termination utilization sequence protein. It's a specific helicase protein, which is a unidirectional contra helicase, meaning that after a, a specific replication fox get, gets stalled, gets seized at a specific non-permissible replication or you can say termination site, it gets recruited and you can, I had already explained to you in my previous video during the initiation phase of the DNA replication that there are two DNA helicases, DNA Bs, which, which keep on traveling and traversing in two different directions because it's a bi-directional replication and you have a bi-directional bi replication fork. Thereby the TUS protein, if when after its recruitment here, would encounter the DNA B which comes from here and the TUS protein which gets encountered here would encounter the DNA B which comes from this side and thereby it would contact DNA B in a counterclockwise fashion or you can say in an opposite direction fashion and thereby it would lead to the removal of DNA B and thereby ultimately it would cause the termination to take place completely. Now there is something also known as catenation. Catenation is a process by which the two specific single stranded DNAs are held together and they cannot really come out of each other. It is known as single stranded covalently closed circular DNA, SCCC DNA. Now how do you relieve or how do you alleviate catenation? The simple answer to that question is topoisomerases, especially class 2 because class 1 topoisomerases would cause the, would trim one DNA strand at a time and are ATP independent. Whereas we need a very quick process here 
so we would go for clash 2 topo isomerase specifically clash 2a clash 2a means dna gyrase and topo 4 these specific topo isomerases they are atp dependent and what they do is they break both the dna strands at one go and they reseal it again so in my later videos i'll be posting in detail about the various classes of topo isomerases and talking about them in detail so for now dna gyrase and topo 4 they are extremely important and significant if you want to prepare for CS error, DBT or ICMR, JRFs. Both these topo isomerases, they can relax the positive supercoils and specifically DNA, DNA gyrase can also decrease the linking number or LK, which also I'll be dealing in my later videos. For now, I'll be telling you a very special mechanism that the ATP required is not for hydrolysis of the strand or for rejoining of the strand. It just causes the confirmation in the enzyme itself, in the topoisomerase enzyme itself, so that, so that it enables the topoisomerase to catalyze the removal that is called the breakage, hydrolysis of the phosphodiester bond and again the resealing of the phosphodiester bond. So that's the latest research done on the topoisomerases. So that's about it, how the replication termination takes place. That's all the conceptual finesse that you require to comprehend this part i hope you were able to comprehend it completely if you have any queries any doubts remaining kindly do not hesitate to post it on the comment section below and if you have any queries related to the elongation and initiation part do watch my previously posted videos if you find the content relevant then kindly hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel biology adc thanks a lot see you soon